Hey guys, how's it going? Yesterday was the release of Halo 5, one of the most anticipated games of 2016. Um, but alongside it came another release from Microsoft, the new Xbox Elite controller. And today I'm going to do a video on this, comparing it with uh, third-party controllers that have been released for the Xbox One, and seeing which one I prefer. For starters, let's have a look at the Xbox Elite controller. So this is what you get in the box, as it is a standard travel carry case with the Xbox logo on the front. It is zip sealed all the way around. And when you open it up, this is what you see. This is the Elite controller. It's black and silver, really nice display, beautiful controller, very nicely weighted. And it comes with some additional things in the carry case here too. The default um, sticks aren't these, these are my um, control freaks that are attached to the default sticks but you can get additional sticks in the packaging that are all different sizes and shapes. Some longer ones, uh, shorter ones with domes on, so you get six in total. For customising uh, the d-pad you can either have this circle disc or they do give you a standard uh, metal d-pad to put in place as well if that's what you prefer. You can see thumbsticks missing from here and the reason for it is that you can actually swap out thumbsticks really quickly and easily because they're magnetic. So these thumbsticks are now firmly in place with the magnets and they can be pulled off really easily as well and swapped out. So my standard setup is the uh, the regular size, these are actually the regular length Xbox sticks that you find on any standard controller but I put some control freaks on for extra grip. You can also see on the front here there is a switch that lets you change between two different settings so if you've got uh, a couple of layouts that you like for button maps you can switch between those. I'll get onto button mapping later on. If you flip the controller over however this is where it gets really interesting because these are features that aren't uh, on any standard Xbox controller. You can see one, two, three, four paddles that can be mapped to any button on the controller. So if you want, you can set this to jump, you can set this to B, you can set this to Y, you can set this to right bumper, you can set them to any bumper or trigger or button that you want using the software that's on the Xbox that we'll look at later on. You can also see these green switches here are called hairpin triggers. So when these are raised up like this, the triggers go all the way down like a standard Xbox controller when you flip them down they only go down half so as a comparison we'll turn one on and one off you can see there's a difference in how far the trigger is going down and this is very good for shooters where you don't need to press the trigger all the way but if you do need to depress them for like racing games like Forza then you've got to take the hairpins off one thing to know about these back paddles is that they are also completely magnetic so you can just pull them out like this and then slot them back in if you want to and that works for any of them and that means you can have four paddles if you want or only two or just one if you just need to use a paddle for jumping for example you can take out three paddles and it would work fine. You can also disable the paddles by double pressing the top uh, sync button and that will make sure that these paddles aren't usable at all uh, if you just want the standard buttons on the front. So as I mentioned before, there's an accessories app that comes with the controller for free. Download it from the store and you can open it up here and configure the controller completely to however you want. So what we're going to do is just briefly go over everything you can configure. Um, so firstly, you can see on the left side, uh, Microsoft gives you some presets. So if you are playing Forza 6, Gears of War, Halo, Campaign or Multiplayer uh, or Sunset Overdrive, these are the Microsoft Studios games, you can set up different configurations for the paddles on the back of the controller. You can of course set your own uh, configurations up. So with that in mind you can basically set up any button on the front of the controller or the top of the controller or the paddles on the back of the controller to any other button uh, on the controller so if you want you can change the A button to be left bumper instead or you or vice versa some people like to have uh, the left bumper as the A button uh, sticks triggers and vibrations another cool thing so you can set up sensitivity curves for the sticks so with a default uh, curve you basically got a bit of delay between when you move it and when the thing moves you can see on the screen um, that it matches up but if you want to you can have it instant so it's immediately on the side of the screen when you press the button uh, or you can go with uh, a delay which makes it just a bit more delayed slightly like a few milliseconds delay in when you press it um, or just a smooth curve 
which gradually pulls it to the outside of the screen rather than it being quite quick. Uh, and the triggers is quite cool too. You can set up uh, the dead zone of the trigger. So at the moment you can see my uh, hairpin triggers are in. So they only go down to about three quarters of the way. But if I remove the hairpin on one side, and you can see it depresses all the way down. So that's it without the hairpin on. And then this is it with the hairpin on. Vibration is a really cool feature where you can set up individual vibration for the triggers because they have like vibrators inside them as well um, and each side of the controller too. So if you wanted no vibration, you can just turn everything down uh, or if you wanted just vibration on the triggers, you can do that or you can just reduce the sensitivity of the vibration if it's too, uh, too powerful for the game. You can even change the brightness of the button on the front of the controller here. And then there are other basic things like inverting the Y axis on the right and the left stick um, and swapping sticks around. One thing I mentioned before is that this little trigger on the front, this little switch, lets you move between two different save presets. So while you can customize it on the app here, if you don't have the app available, you can actually save a preset um, button map to the one and two slots. So if you go into a friend's house, for example, and you're playing FIFA and Halo, you can set up your FIFA preset on one and then swap it over to number two uh, if you'd like to play a different game. I also wanted to mention briefly about third-party controllers. So before the Elite controller, there was actually another brand around that came with paddles and they were called the Scuff. They are the official partner of um, many MLG scenes. So if you see uh, online uh, games tournaments for Halo and Call of Duty, you'll often see the, the name Scuff thrown around quite a lot. Um, and they are well known for uh, these controllers that come with paddles on the back. And they're actually quite expensive. Compared to the Elite controller, I've uh, done a bit of a mock-up here using their website to see what I would get for my money if I wanted all the bells and whistles on a scuff controller. This one in particular that I bought um, sent me back over £100 and it's not even fully maxed out. You've got the default sticks on, the default D-pad, um, only two paddles out of four potentially, uh, no grips or anything like that and I have hairpin triggers as well um, but the only way I can unhairpin them <laughs> is by removing uh, this here and then getting in there with a screwdriver. Another thing to note is that these come with a three month warranty whereas the Xbox ones uh, officially from Microsoft will come with a 12 month guarantee like you would expect from Microsoft product. The paddles on the scuff controller come preset with buttons that you order from their website so if you wanted this one set as A and this one set as B that's it unless you send it back for them to remodify it they're set as those paddles. The only way you can get around that is by paying extra. I think it's about £25 extra for this little magnet which sits on the back there. And what that allows you to do is home modification. So you press the paddle, you press a button that you want to uh, configure, and then it will allow you to remap the paddles. This is obviously really expensive. Um, on top of all the add-ons that Scuff already offer, for example, different grips, uh, the hairpin triggers, different colours, and stuff like that, an extra 25 quid so you can change the paddles is quite expensive when you consider the Microsoft controller comes with an app that does it all for you. One thing I need to note is that I've used the Scuff controller for many months now, and I've loved it compared to the default controller that the Xbox came with. It was much lighter, uh, the paddles are a much nicer experience to use than a standard controller and you don't need to take your fingers off the control sticks at, at all very much. Um, and that was, uh, it gave me a benefit in many games because I could always aim while pressing a button. Uh, and that's the main selling point of a scuff controller and that's why it's sort of like pay to win in the MLG scene. However, um, the Microsoft Elite controller sort of develops on a lot of the features that I enjoyed in the Scuff controller. Now, of the two, I do prefer the Elite controller. Despite it being heavier than the Scuff, uh, the Elite controller comes with loads more features. Uh, it comes with a ca carry case. It comes with extra um, thumbsticks. It comes with two more paddles. It comes with grips. And it even looks really nice in black and silver. Whereas the scuff controller, in order for you to get all the extras, you have to pay for all the extras, which can end up being, in some cases, more than double the cost of an Elite controller, uh, which, by the way, is £120 or 150 US dollars for the Elite controller. You'd be looking 
way more expensive um, if you were to buy a SCUF1 controller. So in my opinion, if you want a controller that has paddles, um, that is customizable, and that looks great, definitely go for the Microsoft Elite controller over the SCUF1.